a few minutes about the purpose. Uh, the thought is purpose. We read, I believe, uh, last, last Friday, that to everything there is a season in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. In everything there is a season. So, but season and purpose is not the same. Season and purpose is not the same. Season is what makes the purpose to come to fruition when that season comes. So first, there has to be a purpose. And when the season for that purpose comes, then that purpose is realized. Amen? So, having a purpose is like having an objective. If you want to use the word analysis. So, when you have an objective, you have to have ways to accomplish that objective. You know, in the world of business, for example, if you're writing a business plan, then for each plan, you have to devise a way how you have to accomplish that purpose. Hallelujah. And if you don't have a way to get that purpose accomplished or the objective, though you may have an objective, but you have not defined how you will get it done, it will not be done. And that's why you can walk into the bank. You might tell them, I have an objective. I want to run a good business and I think I will make a lot of money. They will say, that's great. But can you show us how you will get there? Point to us how you're going to get there. Hallelujah. So that's in the world. But now when it comes to things of God. I think you're changing everything, even the world. When you come to things of God, it works the same way. When God has given us a purpose, there is a reason that I was born. There's something he had in mind. There is a reason you were born. Do you think that God gave birth to you, allow you to be born, so you can leave the country where you were born and come to America and go to school, have a job, build houses, and then die? That's his purpose? That, that would seem like he's not a good planner. Like, what does that mean? And by the way, after you strive, you, you do all you can, you have a bank account, and when you close your eyes, it's no longer yours. You don't have access to it. The best you can get is six feet and a little coffin. Is that a purpose? That, that seems like it's not a good planner. So he must have something else in mind. And that's why we just read in Romans 8.28, those that he called according to his purpose, not your objective, not your goals in life, not how you see things, his own purpose. Then what is his purpose then? Hallelujah. In Philippians 2.13, it says this, Philippians 2.13, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Amen. 
It is God which worketh in you, but to do his will and to do his good pleasure. So, can you hear me very well? If you can hear me very well, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of living God. It is the pleasure of God that he made you and I for a purpose, for his own good pleasure. Sometimes you will not understand why you are who you are. There are many differences, as even as you saw yesterday. You saw people I grew up with. You saw people I lived with. You saw some of them with a red cap. You may not know what that meant. Those red cap means they are chiefs. They have obtained what we call chief tenancy. They are the chiefs of the village. Is the purpose they want to serve. They want to be important for man. It's an agenda, it's an objective. The same way we can all talk about our background, your academia, your job that is so important sometimes to you, your personality, your pride, these are purposes. But God is seeking his own good pleasure. From the subjects, that he created according to his own purpose. So first, he has a purpose. And that purpose is his own good pleasure. And that's why when he made Adam, he said, it is good. This is good. It was pleasing to his sight. But why did he make him? As the Elohim, the self-existing God, the angels, worshipped him. Before he was self-existing, then he created the angels to worship him. But it was not enough. Hallelujah. Amen. Because after he created the earth, the, the Bible tells us the earth was void. In other words, the earth has no life. He has nothing. In computer science, if you're writing a software, you're writing to some procedure, or you're writing some function, there are some functions that will return void. You might use that function to test something. And what we call parameter, I have a lot of computer scientists here, they can appreciate that. In your parameter, you put nothing. You just open, the, open your sentence, and close it, it returns void, nothing. So this earth was nothing. But it pleased God for his own good pleasure that he wants somebody to take care of his handwork, what he has done, his own pleasure. The earth is of the Lord and the fullness thereof. So, his purpose is for man to take care of the earth that he has made. So he placed Adam at the garden to take care of the garden. Hallelujah. Yeah. But when unbelief came in, man lost that position. That purpose was defeated. Because corruption set in. So Adam lost control for him to observe the purpose of dressing the earth, speaking to the winds, speaking to the rivers, speaking to the air, speaking to the animals, the spoken word. Hallelujah! Amen. He lost control. The Bible tells us it is for his own will and good pleasure that we walk. We don't walk for our own pleasure. 
There's nothing you do for your own pleasure. You don't work for your own goodwill. It must serve a purpose for God. So this morning, when you wake up tomorrow, whatever it is you're doing, ask yourself a question. What purpose does whatever it is you're doing serve God? What purpose? What purpose? Perhaps you go to work, you get your paycheck, ask yourself, this paycheck, what purpose does that serve God? You have a nice house, thank God we all do. Ask yourself, this house, what purpose does it serve God? We have lovely children, they are wonderful. Ask yourself, these children, what purpose does it serve God? Everything you're doing has to have a purpose that it serves God. If it doesn't, stop it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Stop it and ask yourself, why am I doing this? Somebody may not understand. People may be puzzled. Why are we such a people? Why do we talk the way we talk? Why do we behave the way we behave? Why do we love the way we love? Look at the love that was displayed even yesterday. Some of these brothers, we've been asking them, let's have a joint fellowship. But it took the death of my mother for all of them to rally around and be there with us. It still serves God a purpose, reminding us we might be separated, but we are one. Hallelujah. Amen. We might be separated, but we are one. Unity of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything must serve a purpose to the Lord. My life must serve a purpose. Your life must serve a purpose. Hallelujah. And in Romans chapter eight, chapter nine, verse 17, in Romans chapter nine, verse 17, there is a man there we're gonna read that was serving a purpose. We're gonna now consider that man and what he represents. It's in Romans 9, 17, and it's also in Exodus 9, 15 to 16. We're gonna read both of them. So in Romans 9, 17, it was put this way by Apostle Paul, for, the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So Pharaoh, was serving a purpose. You see why you have to ask yourself, what purpose am I serving? Pharaoh is a type of the persecutor of the church. Today, Pharaoh represents every persecution the church of God is going through. But we are a type of Israel. We are the royal seed the spiritual Israel. In the natural, in Egypt, there was a man called Pharaoh. He's a type of devil. His purpose was to object and punish the church of God of that day. That was the physical Israel in Egypt. He was serving a purpose. It was to punish them it is to inflict pain, but that purpose is serving God created him for that because God wanted to contrast between the forces of devil and his own power. For God's power to manifest, there has to be devil. Otherwise, there's no contrast. Hallelujah. Amen. God has to have a people to serve his purpose. Devil has to have a people serving his own purpose. 
So it was on that day. Hallelujah. Amen. But God will never be defeated. In Exodus 9, 15 and 16, Moses put it this way. And God was speaking to Moses there. For now, I will stretch out my hand that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence and thou shalt be cut out from this earth. And in very deep for this cause, which is for this purpose, for this cause have I raised thee up for to show in thee my power that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Hallelujah. The name of God. I am that I am. He told Moses. And today, the name of God is Jesus Christ. He has to be declared all through the earth. This gospel must be preached in the uttermost part of this earth. The name of Jesus, the good news, must be preached. Hallelujah! And I believe for this purpose was I made that the name of Jesus will be declared throughout the earth. For this purpose, do I stand? For this purpose, was I created? I was not created to go to work and make money and die. I was not created to build houses, entertain guests, laugh and smile, and eat and die. No, I was made to worship him. I was made to serve him. I was made to spread the gospel. What is your purpose on earth? Hallelujah! What is your purpose? Are you made to worship him? Are you made to sing glory to his name? Are you made to sweet, sing sweet melody of his name? Are you made to declare the counsel of God? Are you meant to believe his word, whatever it will cost you? Or are you meant to be a politician looking what to gossip? Is that why you are made? These are the questions that you ought to answer by yourself and for yourself. The message of the hour is a light upon our path. But when that light shines, are you made to follow that light? Have you accepted that light in your heart? Not in your brain. In your heart. Hallelujah! Amen. In Proverbs 19.21 it says, there are many devices in man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, which is the purpose of God, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Hallelujah. Amen. There are many devices in the heart of man. Many thought processes. Many achievements you have in your mind. Many concepts that come through your mind. But the counsel of God must stand. Hallelujah. The good pleasure of God must stand. The purpose of God for the elect must stand. The counsel of God. The indeterminable counsel of God. A counsel is a meeting of authority 
A council is the authorized to sit and decide. Like you can have council of elders. In America, you have council of Republicans and Democrats, and you have council of the two houses, the house of the senators and the representatives. They are all council. It was the council of the Sanhedrins and, and the Pharisees and the scribes that came together and decided we have to crucify him. He was the council. But we have a higher council. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! We have a council of the Lord. He shall stand and nothing can stop it. Hallelujah. In John chapter 12, Verse 24, continue from verse 24. John chapter 12, we're going to read from 24 to 28. There, the Lord said, his own purpose, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat will fall into this ground and die, he will abide alone. But if he die, he will bring forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. If any man serve me, let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. But for this cause, which is this purpose, for this cause, for this purpose, came I unto this hour. Hallelujah. Yeah. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and I will glorify it again. Hallelujah. Yeah. Father has glorified the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, for this purpose did I come, to establish that name. Because the name of Jesus Christ is the name of God. That name has been glorified. Because Jesus said, except a kind of wheat, we die, it will abide alone. And that's what the prophet came to tell us. That we are many member body. Why are we many member body? Because the kind of wheat is the spirit of Jesus Christ. That's the Holy Spirit. When God dropped that body down, the Holy Spirit came back now, not just on one body. For when Jesus was here, the Holy Spirit was only upon him. But he said, except I drop this body, that spirit will remain only with me. But when I drop this body, that spirit will go upon many members' body. That is what happens to a kind of weight. When you sow that seed, and that seed dies, it then comes back and produces many corn. Hallelujah. Uh, Today, the spirit of Jesus Christ is in you. Because he died once and lives again in me and in you. Hallelujah. Uh, Paul is speaking to Timothy. In 2 Timothy 1, I have it from 1 to 13. Paul is speaking to his son in faith. Admonishing him about the faith that was found in his mother, but first was found in his grandma. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul put it this way. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, 
See, that's the purpose of God. By the will of God. You can say you, a servant, a child of God, by his will. You can say you, a message believer, by his will. You can say you, a born again Christian, by his will. And if he gave you the gift to preach, you can say me, you, a preacher, by the will of God. If he gave you the gift to sing, you can say you, a singer, to worship God by his will. Hallelujah. Whatever he gave you is by his will for his own purpose. That's what Paul is talking about here. Hallelujah. Amen. He continues. He continues. According to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear beloved son, grace, mercy, peace, from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers and pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayer night and day. Hallelujah. Do you remember me in your prayer night and day, friends? Do you pray for Brother Paul in your prayer as I pray for you night and day? Hallelujah. If you forget, please remember when you kneel down to pray, put my name in your prayer. I need your prayer. Hallelujah. And you need my prayer. Apostle Paul is telling Timothy that night and day. He said, I have not ceased. I have not stopped to remember you in my prayer. Hallelujah. Night and day but greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears that I have, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance again, the unfeigning, which is wonderful, which is great, which is powerful, unfeigning strength, strong, unfeigning faith that is in thee, which dwelleth first in your grandmother, Lois, hallelujah, and in your mother, thy mother, Eunice, and I am persuaded in thee also. Hallelujah. Amen. Now you can say, he is calling you to remembrance of the faith that was in brother William Mario Brenham, the messenger. Hallelujah. Amen. And that faith unfailingly has to be found in thee. I'm persuaded, Apostle Paul said, that it's also in you. Hallelujah, because it's the same faith, brothers, that we have to have. It's not two different kind of case. It's the same faith that was once delivered to our fathers, given back to us. Hallelujah, it is that faith that has woken me and waking you to be born again, to die while you are alive, so that you don't die twice when you give up this body. Hallelujah, it is for that purpose that God made you that you can spend eternity and millennium force with him. Hallelujah. He wants to indwell in me and you, to reflect himself. He wants to see a picture of himself in me and you. Hallelujah. He doesn't want you to just be a worker, a laborer, a slave all your life, complaining and complaining about what you don't have. No. He created you that he can reflect his life through you. And if you can surrender and, and accept the purpose of God for your life, then all things will work together for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. My Lord. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul continues. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou we stir up, stir up that gift of God which is in thee by putting on Hallelujah, of my hands. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, of sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner. Hallelujah. But be thou partaker of the affliction of the gospel according to the power of God. Hallelujah. For who has saved us 
who are called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before this world. Hallelujah. When was it given to you? When? Before this world began. Hallelujah. Can we say it before? If you can unmute yourself. Let's say it together. Before, before this world began. began. There you go. That's when you are. <laughs> Not when you came to America. Not when you came to America. Not even when you received the message. <laughs> you know, I think it was uh, uh, 1950 or 1940 or 1970 or whatever year you can remember. No, my brother and sister, it is before this war began. <laughs> the difference is that you did not know. <laughs> Hallelujah! Yeah. Because no one is chasing God. You did not know. You see, but God knew. It is when you realize who you are, when you accepted your purpose. Hallelujah. Yeah. But that purpose was foreordained. It was there before this world began. Who you are. Hallelujah. But you did not know. You stumbled around, you walked around, you, you're blinded by, by your friends or family member, by egotistic goals and your personality and who you ought to be and, and the respect man has to give you for your importance. Those we are who we are. But when the light of the message that God sent to you to awaken you, that's what Paul is telling Timothy, to awaken what's in you. He was there before the world even was created to stay it up. Hallelujah. Yeah. Stay it up. Put it to action. Put it to use. Shun this world. Damn this world. Friends may forsake you. Family may forsake you. But be still and know that he's God. Hallelujah. Stay up that faith. Hallelujah. Unfailing faith. Hallelujah. For this cause I suffer. He said now, you see, but continue here before the world began, but it's now made manifest on, on 110. It's now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who had abolished death, brought life and immortality to the light through the gospel. Glory. I heard all the testimony yesterday. We shall not die. They that believe in Christ Jesus, they shall not die. That's what the scripture is saying. Hallelujah. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, a prophet, apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles. I was sharing something with the, the man that called to my house as I'm dropping him. I said to him, let me introduce myself to you. Because you came to my house over the weekend. We talk about everything else. Let me tell you who I am. Then I told him about the message of the hour. I told him about the prophet that was sent to us. Then I questioned how they baptize even in Anglican church that he is archdeacon or archbishop. I asked him, how do you baptize there? He said, you know, we have changed the way of baptism in Anglican now. He said, we now immerse people in water. I said, okay, that's good practice. I said, but in whose name? In whose name? He said, of course, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I said, uh-huh. <laughs> I said, okay. It's a good practice to put them in water, but can you show me in the Bible where anyone was baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Mm-hmm. I said, when you find it, can you text me? You have my number, text me. But I can show you in the Bible the first baptism and in whose name. And we can talk about why that name is the only name you can be baptized. Hallelujah. And they were silent. Then you begin to listen a little bit. So I gave him an assignment to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what Paul is talking about here. A teacher, an apostle, and a preacher to the Gentiles. Because Paul in Acts chapter 19 also talked about baptism as he was passing through the coast. And he saw some men and asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you baptized? 
So we don't know about the Holy Ghost. And Paul asked them, how were you baptized? It makes a sense and a reason. There is a purpose for the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. These are sound doctrine, given that with steady faith that was given to us before the foundation of this world. And Apostle Paul now said, you know what? Hold fast to the form of sound words. Hold the sound words in one thousand. Hold them, which has, you have heard from me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So what was the purpose of Christ coming to us? What is his purpose then? Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 John 3. 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. We're going to read from verse 1. We're going to read a long scripture. I want to take it up. 1 John 3 from 1 to 17. And there you will see the purpose of Christ. Let's read it now. Be, be, behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that had this hope in him, perfect himself, even if he is pure, Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that ye was manifested. He was manifested. Christ was manifested to take away our sin. In him, there's no sin. Whosoever abided in him, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth had not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committed sin is of the devil. The devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose. Hallelujah! Amen. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So if somebody asks you, for which purpose did Christ come? Here is your answer. In 1 John 3, 8. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested that he might destroy the works of the the devil. You know, when the works of devil is destroyed and there is no more devil, then, then the child of God will never be tempted by devil. Then you become what God made you to be before the foundation of this earth. As long as the work of devil is existing, you are tormented every day. He's the accuser. He's accusing you every second. And if you're not careful, you stumble. You cry, you come back again. It's a cycle. That's why when we want to spend millennium, devil is banned for a thousand years. He will have no power. Right now, he has power. Look at the atmosphere. Look at the diseases. Look at the politics of men. Look at the wickedness of men. But for this purpose was Christ, the son of God manifested that he might destroy the very works of the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. <coughs> Your sin is unbelief. If you're born of God, you cannot disbelieve God and be born of God. You don't sin. That means you don't have any unbelief. You believe. 
for his seed remained in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. In these, the children of God are manifest. The children of devil, whosoever does not righteousness is not from God. It are he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning that we love one another not as Cain who was of the wicked one. Hallelujah! People can force and argue about the serpent seed. Your answers are here. Cain was of the wicked one. He slew his brother and wherefore slew he him because his own works we are evil. His brothers were righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are confused about evil and righteousness, you have your answer. They both have a purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer. And you know, no murderer had eternal life abiding in him. Whereby perceive me the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our life for the brethren. Oh, but who saw this world goods? See how this brother have need and shut up his bowels of compassion from him. How dwelleth the love of God in him? Hallelujah! Amen. Blessed be the name of the living God. In the message, I know my Redeemer liveth. 1958, April 6, 1958. I know my Redeemer liveth. Line 9. Prophet said, We have come. Why are we coming? It's for this purpose only. We could find new hopes. We are on this earth here. We are, we are. We know we are living in darkness. We just don't have to kindly imagine these things or kid ourselves as it was because we know that we are living in the shadow of death. Each time we hear an ambulance scream, when we pass the cemetery, when we see a hospital, every gray hair marks it on our memory that we are doomed people to go young and old. We come on such a morning together to get a hope, some new hope of what we are here for. What is the purpose? Hallelujah. Yeah. What is the purpose? And I think this is a wonderful thing, a time to think on the hopes that God has given us. Now, we want to draw this first into our mind. There's not one thing that can destroy us until the purpose of he who created us has been fulfilled. There could be nothing. We are made for a purpose. This church, this church was built here for a purpose. This foundation was dug 
The cornerstone lay. The blocks led into it, the building. The roof, the interior was not put here just to see if it could be done. It was put here by a purpose, for a purpose. Your home that you live in was not just accidentally put there or somebody just wasting some time. Your home was made for a purpose, to serve a purpose. If you did drive this morning in your automobile, that automobile was not just to see if it could be made. The material was not just wasted by man. It was put here for a purpose and to serve a purpose. The clothing that you wear was not just to see if somebody could fashion something. It was for a purpose. Hallelujah. The food that you eat was not just grown on the earth just to see if it can grow. It was made for a purpose. God did not have to just make a tree just to be a tree. He made a tree for a purpose. God did not make you and I just to see if he could do it. He made us for a purpose. Therefore, there is a purpose of us all being here. You are not here just to be another human being. You are here because that God made you for some purpose. You are not here just to eat the food that God grown. You are not here just to live in a house that man made or to wear the clothing that someone fashioned. You are not here, but you are here for a specific purpose. Hallelujah! Amen. You are here for a specific purpose. No matter how little you are, or how big you are, or how important you are, or how unimportant you are, you are here to serve a purpose. Just like my finger is here, for a purpose. My nail on my finger is for a purpose. My eyes and every part of our body is to serve a purpose. It was not put here just to see what it would look like when it was put here. But it was put here to serve its purpose. It was God's divine plan to do so. And if we were put here for a purpose, then there is nothing that can destroy us until God's purpose is fulfilled. Hallelujah! Yeah. Nothing until God's purpose is fulfilled. Nothing can harm us until that purpose that God has put us here has been manifest. No matter how much trouble we have, how much headache or sorrow that we go through, all of these things are reasons. There is a reason for it. We will take, for instance, Noah in the Bible. There was a flood that came on and the earth was destroyed. The vegetation and everything was destroyed. But Noah and the seed that he had taken into the earth, God's purpose can never be defeated. There is nothing that can defeat it. So how happy ought we to be today? Resting upon that beautiful revelation of the word of the living God, that there is neither things present 
no things that is to come. There is no sickness. There is no sorrow. There is no death. There is no perils. There is no nothing that can separate us from the purpose of the living of God. What God has imagined in his mind, what God has purposed in his heart to bring to pass. There is no demon. There is no power. There is nothing that can separate God's great immortal inner eternal plan. It must be as God has said. Here we find in that day of the world was going to be destroyed by a flood that God made a preparation, a preparation for a cause to preserve his purpose. He did it in the days of Noah. He's doing it today. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Glory. Amen. He's doing it today. Today. Hallelujah. Amen. Today. Glory. He's doing it today. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We find out he's doing it. Hallelujah. To preserve his purpose. Hallelujah. Today. Hallelujah. He has made a preparation to conserve to his own purpose. He will conserve a church. He will conserve a people. Glory. He will conserve subjects for the great domain that death cannot destroy. Hallelujah. Amen. Death cannot destroy it. And we realize that it is by faith that we believe this. But the resurrection produces a solid foundation on which our faith rests. Nothing can destroy it. As a poet once wrote, oh, what a fortress of glory divine, hair of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. What an assurance upon this solid rock, the resurrection of our blessed Lord, lover, the Lord Jesus, nothing can destroy it. He can be planted. It has been planted. It is the seed of God. It is the purpose of God to give us the blessed Holy Spirit. It is the purpose of God to show us the signs and wonders and miracles. It is the purpose of God, and nothing can destroy it. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Glory! Hallelujah. Glory! Amen. Nothing can destroy it. All powers of hell my wage against it. It will not prevail. We have God's eternal promise. There may be teachers. There may be isms rise. There may be great program rise. There may be things that look like it will be destroyed, but it can never be destroyed. It is the purpose of God to see that it will prevail. Then it is not up to me. It is not up to you whether it will be destroyed or not. It is up to God. And we can rest assured on it that God will never let our heritage be destroyed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He will never, for it is his purpose to give it to us. We unworthy creatures deserving of hell, but his grace hold us through it. Look how many lost and blind. Look how many sinners were there in the world. The hour I got saved. God saved me for a purpose. I am determined by his will to do that purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you determined by his will to do the purpose for which you were created and made. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. But Abraham said, I am determined to do the very will for which I am made. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't care what anything else goes. I want to do it. And in the hour when I see all the churches, they are great glamour. They are rich. They have need of nothing. They say, and they see them miserable, wretched, blind, patting you on the shoulder. They want you to compromise with them. I was born for a purpose. is to condemn them things and to call them out. Yes, I do. Remember, Jesus came to this earth. There wasn't one hundred of the people on the earth ever knew that he was here. He come to them that were elected group. He said, no man can come to me except my father has drawn him. And all the father, past tense, all the father has given me, they will come. They will know it. They will hear. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You love the Lord. Amen. Why I love him. Why I love him. Because he first loved me. I Chase my salvation Oh God Praise me You love him I love him oh, I love him Because
for which we are created. As we read the scriptures, Timothy to Romans, Philistians, and the message of the hour compelling us that the purpose of God will never be defeated. All the promises made in the scripture is to fulfill your purpose. We are purpose never to die again. If we can be born again, then we enter into eternal life. We are passed unto death, from death unto life. And grave has no more victory over us. What a reassurance, my Lord. I want to thank you again, dear Jesus, my Lord and Savior, for the message of the hour that you gave unto us. And the mind and the heart to receive to meditate upon the word and reflect what we have heard. For faith coming from hearing the word. But we cannot have itchy ears. We must hear the word and become the word. John was told to take out the book and eat the book. It shall be sweeter than honey in his mouth, the bitter in his belly. That is your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, to my brothers and sisters. We use the Zoom forum today, Lord, as we are under expectation that you will provide for us a place to worship. There are some churches that are going through similar things sometimes. As my brother, Pastor Frank, told me that Sunset Tabernacle is going through the same. Their building is to be sold. And they're running around to see if they can buy that building. They're looking for money from anywhere to help them buy it. You heard him ask me to help them. Right now, Lord, I don't have nothing to give them, but I'll give them this prayer that you might assist them, my Lord, to make a way for them to buy the building as they purpose in their heart. And they believe we will serve your purpose. Lord Jesus, help them according to their faith and provide a way for them to buy that building and keep their service where they have been for more than 35 years. Lord Jesus, thank you for all the ministers that we saw yesterday. Brother Aristo, Brother Ansley, Brother Frambo, Brother Dennis, Dennis, Pastor Dennis, all them, my Lord, thank you for their visitation to us. Bless them all. Provide journey mercy as some are going back home perhaps today. Dear Jesus, our journey is in your hands. Prayer was said yesterday to the whole family and beyond those traveling and those not traveling. Lord God, we are in your hand. Keep providing for us, Lord, the resources we need to travel. Above all, give us the good health and the safety. When we travel, we travel on the wings of an eagle. Get our destination safely. Take the body of my sweet mother and put the body back to earth where it came from. And wave that body goodbye. As I know, she's already with thee. But that's what our faith tells us. Absent with this body is present with the Lord. With our celestial body, she's worshiping with the saints. They are expecting and waiting for us to join them one glorious day. If Christ will tarry to come, we join. But if you come, we'll all unite once and for all. When the trumpet shall sound, 
We know the dead in Christ shall rise. We that are alive, we caught up with them to meet you up in the air. There'll be a great reunion. What a day that will be. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your purpose of the elect. To have a church that's pure, unadulterated, a redeemed church, a refined church, pressing on, not looking at the isms, not looking at the politics of the world, not looking at the work of men, but setting aside those things that are easily besieging us and, and just pressing on for the mark of a higher calling in Christ Jesus. As Apostle Paul admonished Timothy, his son in Christ, to put unto him, to refine unto him that faith that was on his mother and grandmother. That faith is now the faith of the fathers back to the children. But that is what Elijah came to do. To bring back the faith of the fathers back to the children. The fathers of faith. The faith of the disciples. The apostles. They are the fathers of faith of Christianity. Bring that back to the children. Us that are alive today. That your calling will be sure. That your purpose will be sure. That there's no weapon from against us that will prosper. Because you said so. Because you said so, dear Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. We love you, Lord. We love you, dear Jesus. We appreciate you, dear Jesus. Thank you for this life. Thank you for this service. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. May you help us, Lord, in every way. May we not quiver, nor wave. May we not walk backwards, but press forward. May we rekindle the fire of worship in our life. May there be prayer warriors that will come from these services. May your children never fall back. May they press on, my Lord. Knowing that he that called us, you're more than able to bring us to pass. To give unto us that which you promised us against that day. Blessed be your holy name. Lord, thank you again for everything. We love you and I appreciate you. Father, we pray with thanksgiving. The only name we know. The only name. The name that's above all names. The name that's above all the both in the heaven and on earth. The name of our baptism. The only name we know. The name of Jesus Christ. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised. May our soul rejoice on the mention of the name of Jesus Christ. May the bride of Jesus Christ rejoice upon the mention of his name. May the devil run upon the mention of the name of Jesus. May our soul find a perfect resting place upon the mention of the name Jesus. We pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. It's almost two o'clock. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed week. Uh, and we're going to have our Friday Zoom prayer and then we're going to have our Sunday service at the hotel and you pray for this week that God will keep moving in the heart of men to do what they are supposed to do as you had in, I had in my prayer remember Sunset Tabernacle Pastor Frank called me on the side before he left yesterday and he said he called me Pablo Say, Pablo, I want to share this with you. Their church was also told that their building is, is to be sold. So they are riding around to see if they can get enough money for a down payment and find a bank that can finance them. So he's soliciting money, fund, anywhere he can. And if God put anything in your heart to send to them, do. Do whatever God put in your heart. May God help every ministry. May God help us. Hallelujah. As we serve him with love and humility, we continue to be one in Christ. And I know he's doing something mighty in our
and they, they can see me. They can just see me. Okay, see if my suit can come back up. It's quite interesting. They can hear me. You know, can you hear me? That you can see me. My suit just stop by itself. So if you can see me, that you can hear me. Um, I was closing up with some some words. I can they, they come and then what? If I come there. Okay, see so like I'm coming back on. Okay, I'm back again. Hallelujah.